Hey guys, Mark here. I hope you have been doing well and I'm back with another tutorial for you. This time I'm going to show you how to make a two color hands and knot bracelet. So basically in this video we're going to interweave a doubled three byte Turk's head with the hands and knot interweave which will give it a kind of a gaucho look to it. So with that said let's see the supplies needed and then get into the tutorial. So here are the supplies that you're going to need. So you have type 1 paracord, lacing needle, mandrel and I have attached a rubber band that we're going to use to hold ends of the cords. Now I have one cord here that's 14 feet long. This is going to be our primary color and this is enough for a mandrel that's about a quarter of an inch wide. And I also have 7 feet of the cord that we're going to use for the interweave, which is enough again for a mandrel or a quarter of an inch wide. I have set up a 3 byte Turk's head base knot, and I'm going to leave a link in the description you can use to get to this point. We're going to double this setup first. So basically, just take your primary cord. And then simply double up your standing end. And we do this by just following our standing end again through the knot, going over where it is going over and under where it is going under. Now just continue doing this until you have reached your standing end and at that point we're going to continue using our interweave cord. So here you can see a doubled 3 byte Turk's head. It looks quite nice by itself but we're going to add an interweave to it. To add an interweave we're going to place another cord next to our standing end on the left side of our standing end and at that point we're going to start by splitting pairs. As you can see we have one pair here and another pair here going along side the left of our standing end and splitting all of these pairs here. We're going to enter with an over one. Then to split the next pair, we're going to need to go under two. So under two. Then continue going over two to split a pair and then under two to split a pair this pair here so under two then over two again to split another pair and under two. Basically the sequence is over two under two, always splitting a pair when you do this.
Continue on to the right side. And once we are at our right side, we're going to exit using an over one and re-enter with an under one. And then continue splitting pairs, just like we did going to the right side. So we're going to enter with an under. Then continue with an over two. Then under two. We have now reached our section that has a yellow chord or our secondary chord here and we're just going to ignore it and continue splitting pairs. So at this point, since we went under 2 before, we're going to go over 3 to split the next pair. So over 3. And continuing splitting a pair by going under 2. And continue going over two to split a pair. And then with the next section, we're going to go under three to split a pair. And just continue. Since we went under 3, we're going to now go over 2 to split a pair, and then under 2 to split a pair. And again, continuing, going over 3 to split a pair, and under 2. And over two. Under three. Just continue splitting pairs going to the left side. And we're going to continue once you reach the left. We have exited with an under one, so we're going to re-enter with an over one and continue splitting pairs. So the first thing we're going to do is go over one, under two, to split a pair, then over two, Under 3, again always looking to split, Then continue over two to split a pair and under two. Since we went under 2 now, we're going to go over 3 to split a pair and then under 2 to split another one. Then 
continue by going over 2 to split a pair and then under 3 to split the next pair. Then over 2, under 2. Continue by splitting pairs. And again over 3. Under two. Now continue towards the right side, and we're going to continue once we reach the right. We have exited using an over one, so we're going to re enter with an under one. So under one. Then over 2 to split a pair. Then under 3 to split the next pair. So under 3. Then over 3 to split the next pair. Then continue under 2 to split a pair. And over 3 to split the next pair. And then under 3. Then over 2 to split a pair. And under 3 to split the next pair. Then over 3 and under 2. As you can see, once you get the fill for splitting pairs, you actually don't need to worry about losing your way. Continue towards the left, and we're going to pick up from there. We again exit with an under one, so we're going to re enter with an over one. So, over one, and then under two to split a pair. We're then going to continue by going over 3 
to split the next pair and then under 3. Then over 2 to split the next pair and then continue with an under 3. As you can see, as the knot gets tighter, it's a bit harder to work with it. But this is natural. You can switch to a smaller mandrel, but I find that if I work the knot tight, it looks better. We're going to continue with an over 3, and then under 2 to split the next pair. So under these two. Continue towards your right side. We have again exited with an over. So we're going to continue with an under one. And then immediately we have an over three to make. To split the next pair. All we're going to do from now on is go over 3, under 3 to split pairs. So the last pass is probably as easy as the first one was. So over 3, under 3. Then again over 3 and then under 3. And we're going to simply continue going this over 3, under 3, until we reach the left side, at which point we're going to finish our interweave, and we have a two-color Henson knot ready. So we have reached our left side, and it is time to finish the knot. We have exited with an under 1, when we're simply going to place our working end next to our standing end, to finish the knot. So guys, I hope that this tutorial was clear enough. I enjoy tying these types of bracelets and I think that they look great, but they do take some patience and they are sometimes a bit hard on the hands, especially if you work them tight. Ideally, I think that switching between different sizes of mandrels can be optimal to keep the knot a bit looser to work with. In any case, thank you for joining me and see you next time.